Hello everybody, Andy here again. Well, the other day over here in Britain, something, a little sort of seismic shift happened, I think, in the way that uh, communications and media, etc., is changing. Um, an evening paper here in London, the London Evening Standard, which at the moment has a circulation of around about 250,000 copies per day, um, in the city of London generally, but in this sort of environs as well, um, has decided to go free. Uh, from I think it's the 12th of October every single issue is going to be given away now that to me that's a monumental change because this is a very well respected newspaper it's been pretty much the only evening newspaper in London um, for a number of years now recently we've had some of those free newspapers that are given away you may well have them where you live in the city especially if you live in a big city these ones that are handed out by people at subway or train stations metro stations underground stations whatever you want to call them and they're given away we have a morning paper in london called metro which has sort of gradually uh, gone out as well and we, we did have a couple of free evening papers one of those has actually closed and there's one left that may well now be amalgamated into the the free evening stand because they're sort of tied up in sort of ways but the thing with the free newspapers is that they tend to be trashy now it is a criticism in some ways because there isn't a lot of news in them I read an article, actually, a blog the other day uh, on the internet, once again, one of those things that's linked via Twitter, one of the great things that that service is there for. Um, and it, actually, a guy, Clay Shirky, who I've read a, a book by before, who, who analysed a couple of newspapers, and he got, he got a newspaper out, a local newspaper in America, in a city, and I can't remember which city, but it was a college city, university city, and he actually cut the newspaper up into bits, and he analysed how much was real news, how much was th that had been generated by the staff, of that particular paper, how much of that news had come from outside, how much was stuff that you could get anywhere, like uh, reviews, astrology, sort of bits and pieces, features if you want to call it that, and all these other little bits, cookery recipes and all those gardening tips and, you know, everything like that, which, you know, aren't, aren't news as such. You can find that sort of thing out anywhere, couldn't you? And, and also all the advertising and the advertising you don't think is advertising, all those type of things that were there. And he, he analyzes and put them all into little piles and he cut the paper up and he found out that very little of the actual newspaper, but A was news, but B had actually been got together, had been reported by the actual staff of that newspaper. I think he said that it was basically the front cover and the back cover of the newspaper that sort of portrayed the, the local news as got together, uh, accumulated by the local reporters. The rest are coming from news agencies, AP or whatever the news agencies are. So it hadn't been got together by the newspaper. So there's that element of, you know, what are they actually doing? It, it, are they producing a newspaper or are they cobbling together all these bits and pieces that we could do ourselves via the internet? and producing something that isn't really a newspaper anymore. Now, there's big circulation battles going on across the world. We've all heard about local newspapers or even newspapers themselves, paid-for content, which are closing down, and we've heard about Rupert Murdoch and News International trying to change the way that they are going to do things because the rise of the internet has taken a big toll on the way that newspapers are produced. Now, one of the things that Clay Shirky said, and in another article I saw somewhere else, was that, the reason for this, it's the same with the music industry, it's the same with television, it's the same with the film industry as well. They haven't grasped what the internet and especially what social media and everything like this is about. They're still looking at it in the old way. They haven't realised that things need to change here, that they need to look at this, think outside the box, all those sort of silly phrases that you get, and look at things from a different way, look at it from a different angle. The consumer is the king now, whether you like it or not. As a big company, you have to think about, you have to be there for your consumers, for your customers or your potential customers, not the other way around. And, you know, you give them a service and they should be thankful for it. And I think that's what's happening here with the, with the Evening Standard. Whether their idea will work, the whole idea is, as I said, that they've now produced 250,000 copies of their newspaper paid for per day. How many of those are actually paid for was another issue. But they are now going to print 600,000 copies of the newspaper to give away. Now, from an advertising point of view, that obviously means if I'm an advertiser, potentially I've got two, three times as many people possibly looking at my advertisement in that particular paper than I might have had before. This does raise other particular questions which I'll come to. Now one of the things, as I said, that this is a pretty well-respected newspaper with good news coverage generally. Yes, like any other 
the media that's around now. It's been dumbed down a little bit, and we've got that celebrity type thing, which is what Clay Shirky was talking about in his article as well. If I can find it, I'll put a link over there somewhere for you so you can read it yourself and the other one. Um, but, and they've gone a bit trashy, but the whole idea of the Evening Standards approach is to keep the standards high, to keep the journalism there, to get people to read newspapers for what they should be for news after all you know the, the, there's a hint in there in the title isn't there this this also raises i've raised wrote a couple of points down here about will other people follow suit i'm sure lots of other people are going to be looking at this very very closely rupert murdoch being one although he's talking about internet uh, use of newspapers and charging people for it but whether other people are going to think could the daily papers go uh a free version. I'm not sure that they could because there's too much competition. The one thing is that they pretty the Evening Standard pretty much has a monopoly, so that might make a difference. They can afford to give this away because there isn't any other competition. But if a daily newspaper here, a good quality daily newspaper, I'm not talking about the trashy throwaway ones that we give in the stations, etc. If somebody, a real, like the Times, for example, to pluck a name out of the air, decided to go free, I wonder what difference that would make. If they could get their advertising or their, their brand out there, the more viewers you get, etc. It does raise the, the other issue, though, that how we value things that are free hence the title of the video, because free conjures up lots of different things. Yes, free is great, isn't it? Let's have it. Well, if this is free, I'll pick it up. I wouldn't normally read this, but I'll pick it up. And there's the rub, really, because you're picking it up because someone's thrusting it in your face. Are you going to read it? Are you going to value it as much because it's free? Are you going to take so much notice of it? We don't mind when someone hands us a trashy newspaper that we can read for five minutes. The Metro newspaper that's given away in London, they reckon that people spend no more than 20 minutes reading that particular paper, and it's built and designed for that. Editorially, everything, it's built for that. It satisfies a particular need. That small, bite-sized chunk, someone's sitting on the bus, on the tube, train, in the, on the train, etc., just looking at that while they've got their iPod on or something like that. It's not meant for great intellectual debate or analysis or real big news coverage, shall we say. Whereas... Obviously, the big newspapers over here, the Times, etc., etc., that's what they do. So that's, that's, that's the point. It, it's, you buy something. We get things for free on the internet. We, get, we download music for free. We, we get newspapers, etc., thrust at us. We get all these flyers and things given at us. We generally just take them and put them in the bin or the recycling tray or something like that. Do you actually value something if you pay for it? Do you value it more? Will you take more care about it? Will you read it more? Will you take more notice of whatever's in that publication, that newspaper, that movie, that piece of music or something, if you actually had to pay for it? Now, <laughs> I think that is a big change. Whether you think that or not, but I think up here, if we pay for something, we value it more. And if you buy a newspaper and you actually pay good money for it, you're far more likely to make sure that you read that newspaper than if you were giving it to you for nothing. Now, I've done it myself. I've been there. I pick these newspapers up at stations, etc., if I happen to go through them. And sometimes someone hands you these newspapers as you're going past the station. Oh, I'll just take one, you know. And think of all the recycling issues, <laughs> climate issues, etc., etc., with that type of thing. But let's go. That's just a couple of ideas. I've got a couple of other things. As I said here, I've written down here. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You know, what something has to give somewhere, doesn't it? Just because that newspaper's free doesn't mean that it's going to be good. And that's, I think, a big test case here with what the the Evening Standard here in London is going up here in London. I'm 60 miles away. But in, uh, but in London, a great idea, you know, a Russian has taken over this and has got a whole new look at things. This could be something that changes the way that people look at things. This, this could be a guy who's actually looked at things from outside the box has seen what the internet and everything else is doing and the way that culture and the media and everything, society, etc., has actually changed and is changing what we do. Maybe this maybe this will work. In some ways, I hope it does. Um, you know, fair play to the guy. He's having a go at it. He's giving it away for free. But I'll be interested to see how it actually evolves. Obviously, it will take some time to do that. Um, what else have we got here? Is, is this all the internet's fault? <laughs> Yes, I think it probably is all the internet's fault. The internet is changing things. And as I said earlier, a lot of these people are playing catch up. We're looking at things in different ways because we tend to understand it. But I'm reading a book at the moment, which I'll probably do a review about actually at some time, um, talking about how this has changed 
and we have to look at things differently. There's things in there that I know about, but it still made me think about things. Oh, never really thought about that idea, you know, that type of thing. And the media are catching up. So this is a big topic. This Obviously, this can be taken in, in lots of different ways. But one of those interesting things, one of those sea changes, as I said, with the media generally, and it would be very interesting from my point of view to see how this changes everybody else. I'm sure all the big newspapers, all the big guns out there are going to really be knocking this down and say, oh, it's, it's trashy journalism. But if it keeps up its standards, if it keeps up the people, the columnists and the news, etc., that it does tend to have at the moment, it's on the more tabloid side of the market, I suppose. But, as I said, it's still pretty well respected. If it keeps that going, then really that will change things, I think. Anyway. October the 12th will be a big day for media in this country. I wonder if it's happened in your country yet or whether this is something new. I'd love to know and whether it's worked and if you've seen any other articles um, about this type of thing. It, it interests me, as you might have noticed. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for your time. I'll just speak to you soon. Goodbye.